right, everybody, let's get started. Uh, it's 1034 a.m. And uh, I appreciate everybody coming in today. Um, this is going to be a quick one, but it's going to be a really good one, I think. Um, a quick market update, and we'll talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. Um, I am going to, as always, uh, you guys have any questions or comments you want to start out with? Anybody have anything they want to start with before we go into the market? Perfect. All right. Uh, let me see. Do a little screen share. All right. Are you guys looking at the uh, MLS homepage here? Everybody see this? Okay. All right. Um, this is a Stellar MLS. For those of you who are not in the Stellar area, this is a Stellar MLS homepage. This is a local look. Um, guys, these numbers have turned around from before when we were putting 3,200 new ones on and closing 5,000 every every week. Um, they have closed. They have turned around. So new listings. Uh, can you guys see this? Okay, you want to blow it up a little bit? Uh, There we go, a little better. Um, so new listings, 4577, price increases, very few. Um, price decreases, wow, lots of them, right? Does that mean prices are dropping or does that mean that we were listing things really high a couple of months ago and now we're lowering them? Um, I haven't seen an overall decrease in prices other than people aren't willing to pay what they were. So obviously prices are gonna come, they're not, they're not coming down, they're just not rising anymore. Um, back on the market. So you take out your back on the market from your pendings and you come out with, you see where this 3,200 came from. If you take the 5,000 minus the ones that are going back on the market, you know, you look at this 5,000 number and that seems like a huge number for pending. But as you guys know, right now, uh, buyers want concessions again, buyers want repairs again. Um, and so stuff is coming back on the market more than it maybe was before. Um, and buyers are still in the mode of trying to put stuff under contract and then uh, because they're still in that panic mode of got to get something under contract, but things are coming back on the market um, at about the normal pace. It's at uh, 30% almost. Um, so what we're seeing here, 45, 4,600 almost new listings, 3,200 sold. Inventory is going up. So buyers are able to be a little more selective. Buyers are able to make more demands. Um, is this, in your opinion, and I'm going to need some feedback here, a good time to buy? I would wait. Yes. For longer. You would wait for I what? Wait. <laughs> well, I just received an email from Divi Homes yesterday, and they said that going forward with contracts, they're not going to give full price. They're going to give, I think it said 10 to 20% less than asking price. And they're expecting uh, like a 10 to 15% reduction in the next couple of months on the prices of homes. Okay. Um, well, that's interesting. So you, uh, they, said, they, said, they said they're going to do that. They, and they told you that they're going to do their email said they were going to offer less and less. Yeah, I just emailed you a copy of it. I was going to put a, a little screenshot on the Zoom call here if you want me to. No, it's all right. All right. Um, so you think prices are going to go down? A little, I, but just so I think I think so, but it's not much. I think things are going to stay, but maybe just go down slightly. All right. Who else has an opinion? I think it's a good time to buy. Me too. Me too. Um, I do, regardless of what Divi thinks, and you know, uh, they can offer whatever they want to offer. Uh, that doesn't mean people have to take it. Um, regardless of what they think, I think it is a wonderful time to buy, and you are going to, um, you know, this this whole this whole market, this is a wonderful time to buy. Your, your prices are low. You've seen this meme that's going around on social media. A lot of you have seen it um, uh, with the, you know, the $450,000 house a year ago, you'd have paid 500,000 for it and you'd have had a, you know, 4% interest rate. And now you would pay 425 for it and have a, uh, you know, that's, I think that's a big jump, but uh, in value, but you would have a 7% interest rate and how the payments were about the same. Um, what it doesn't really go into is when you sell that house, 
you owe 75 grand less, right? Um, yeah. So you have, you have uh, the principal and that's really what, that's how you grow equity and something is owing less on it. So um, that is a, uh, th- that is also, well, that also says that makes, that makes, it's a, it's a very simplified and, and kind of a silly meme. It's making a point, um, but it exaggerates everything. The house that was 500 this year, you did not lose 75,000 in equity between last year and this year. Um, so it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit exaggerative, but it's not, uh, but it's not wrong. So if you pay less for a house, even if your payments are a little bit more for the next one year, five years, whatever it is before interest rates come back down, you're doing, you're better off. Um, so that is something to, to discuss. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen this. Um, yeah, I saw a Dave Ramsey thing where he's coming off. He's even pushing it. Um, you would think that he wouldn't be as, as anti-debt as he is. I don't know if you guys follow Dave Ramsey or not, but um, I, I follow him in, in enough that I know that he's in the real estate market um, himself and that he is uh, very on top of this. He's very anti-debt. Uh, I would have thought that he would be anti uh, interest, higher interest rates, but he's not because he's because of the, that exact reason. I'm sure is that you're buying the house for less. Your total debt is less, regardless of what your rate is, and you can always change the rate. You can't change what you owe on it without putting a bunch of money in. So that's that's that. What are you guys thinking about these numbers as far as um, as far as inventory and stuff going? What do you think that means to you guys? It's nice that inventory is increasing, um, but it's still it's still a challenge. It still seems to be low, and still still seems like it's a factor that's going to affect us for a while longer. Um, just during this this shift. Okay. What do you guys? What, how many months of inventory do we have right now? Don't know. Three, I think. Is it three? Are we back up to three? I thought it was in the twos, but we're probably close to three. You see, it's going up right now. Uh, you know, new and back on market is almost double what sold is, um, and and it's way above pending. It's it's uh, what's it's a thousand above pending. So yeah, there should be, and that's just in this little area. So it should be um, should be going up pretty pretty swiftly. Um, but yeah, if we're in the, if we're in the two and a half, which I think is where, about where we are, um, we're getting close to normal, you know, three to six months, it's getting back, back to, to an even market type of thing. Um, and certainly buyers are much more powerful than they were, you know, six months ago. Um, and it's kind of, I don't know, you guys doing your comps, kind of messing with your comps because you're starting to phase out of, of the ones where people were just, you know, giving their, their kidney to buy a house. And now, you know, now they're asking for uh, concessions and repairs. So it's uh, it's been a pretty quick shift. And but all of those market conditions are still showing up in your if you're doing a six month CMA or something like that. So you may want to shorten your CMAs to give your seller a little more realistic uh, outlook on things when you go for listing appointments. You guys yeah, agree with Ryan, that? Yeah, for sure. Ryan, the other thing that I just added to my weekly listing updates that I do for my sellers is not only telling them about you know the past sales like average days on market, but also adding the active eight average days on market right now. Whereas usually I don't focus on that too much, but right now there's such a big disparity. Like my Oviedo listing, the average days on market for sales is like 27. And then if you look at active, they've been sitting on the market for over 40 days, these new active listings. So, you know, it might be somewhere in the middle, might be the actual true average, you know, days on market for that area right there. So focusing on a few other outside factors is really important right now than just kind of the normal, normal ones that we usually look at and when the market's moving faster. And I'm gonna get to Jika here in a second. He put something in chat. I'm gonna get to him in a second, but I wanna talk about uh, CMAs too. Guys, uh, if you wanna make a CMA something realistic to, to give your seller a, realist, a realistic uh, idea of what it's gonna take and you really wanna be realistic with your sellers. You wanna get the listing, but you wanna be realistic with them so they're not angry with you when it doesn't fly off the shelf. And one of the things you want to look at, people don't look at enough, is the active ones. Well, the active ones, Ryan, they're dumb because somebody can ask a million dollars for a $300,000 house if they want to. Yes, they can. But you need to show them your, the competition too. 
now that we're fighting for buyers again, we're trying to get buyers again, you need to show them the competition. You need to show them what's out there. Six months ago, that didn't matter, or eight months ago, whatever it was, it didn't matter what the competition was because there were going to be plenty of buyers for everybody, right? That's why we didn't care about our pricing. Now, you need to uh, you need to compete with other people that are active in your subdivision. G could just posted, I think the numbers don't show the reality because I listed a house last week, I put the best price in the subdivision and still only one showing. The market is very, very cooled off and has been, yes, because buyers are scared of the interest rates. I mean, that's not a that's not a surprise, right? They are, they are scared of the interest rates. That's what we we've got to get your people off of. That's what you should be focusing on with your with your social media. Um, guys, use content. I see a lot of you guys do a good job, but some of you don't use content. Use the stuff like I was on. I was on when I saw that Dave Ramsey thing. That wasn't even an agent posted that. I was on. I was on uh, Instagram Reels or something. So uh, and it was just a random person. So. You guys, I mean, it might have been an agent. I just didn't know who it was. So it wasn't anybody local. You guys, find stuff like that. Find these things. Use them for content. Um, you know, regardless of what you think of Dave Ramsey or anybody else, that's some people do care about that. And some people want to hear people's opinions. They need to hear people's opinions because all they hear is, you know, you're, you're surrounded by people who have wrong opinions. And the regular person, you know, you guys want to hear my opinion on heart surgery? Uh, I mean, you know. You probably don't, shouldn't. So it, it's good. Go to a professional. Um, so, but everybody has an opinion on this market. They, you know, these they get so scared of of what they hear and what they see, and and they hear, oh, the market's going to crash, and you know, they remember what they remember what happened 15 years ago, and you know, so everybody's got their own their own things in their mind. But if your if you, your job is to educate as well and to share things and get some good content. Um, I would I would offer to get some for you, but if you're too if you're not active enough, let's just say <laughs> proactive enough to get your own content, then you're not going to follow up on leads and stuff anyway. So get out there and get some content, get some good stuff for your social media. You've got to get buyers off the mark now. You guys are starting to feel it. This pipeline from when the buyers stopped flowing to you, this pipeline is starting to dry up, and you guys are starting to feel the pressure because you don't have buyers, even if you've got sellers now. You don't have anybody to sell them to and you're starting to feel that pressure. You guys need buyers. You guys need to generate buyers. So the way to do it is to is to is to educate them, inform them on what this means. What does it actually mean for um, for with the interest rates going down? What more can I do with the pricing? What more can I do with the other things we can negotiate in a contract to help my buyer out, including the, the buy downs and all that stuff? You know that's about a break even break even proposition. Just get the people to give you a, a concession. You know, go for a concession. Go for this. Go for that. Use your buyer your buyer uh, power now. I remember giving a year ago. We had uh, trainings on how to use your seller power. You know, how to use your seller's power and and what to do with your buyers when the seller's beating them up. Now it's going to start being the opposite way a little bit. And it's time to adjust and it's time to educate your buyers that they can get stuff from the sellers. Be be creative like we were with the sellers before. Be creative like that with the buyers now of what we can get, what kind of concessions we can get, what kind of help we can get, what kind of um, interest buy downs we can get. And what does that actually mean to them? You can do not tell them, um, do not tell them that the, you know, oh, rates will be down next year and, you know, you can refinance. You don't know that. So don't don't tell them that. But talk to them about the probability of rates going down in the near future you know, within the next handful of years, the probability guys don't tell them it's going to, because we don't know that for sure. Um, so um, insurance more challenging since the storms. Yeah, all of that stuff is stuff to overcome with buyers, but they're they're gonna do it. You know, it's not just buyers who are facing the higher insurance. Wherever they live now, the insurance is going up, which is why their rent's going up. And every, if they're renting or their insurance in the house they're currently in is going up. Wouldn't they like a, a newer roof with, uh, with better things? Uh, Martha, how can I help you? Martha? I'm sorry, I couldn't find the button. <laughs> uh, good no morning. A uh, quiet question. In your opinion, um, your opinion or anybody that's listening, what's more recommendable to get a buy down or to get the concession on closing costs? Or what's the best for a buyer right now? What would you recommend in terms of getting a concession from the seller? 
Um, I will open it up to anybody who wants to answer that, but I went over all the numbers last week. Um, if you want that sheet, then I can give it to you. But it was it was pretty much a break even. It just the, the buy down makes the uh, makes the bank happier. Um, it's a math problem. It's a big it, math problem, it, right? It, it, yeah. Yeah, but it's but it comes out when well, you guys saw the numbers right. last week. It was coming came out about even the, the buy down saved them a few bucks. Depends on when they refinance, Martha. That's that's one hundred percent of what it is. Depends on when they refinance, and nobody knows that. So it's a crapshoot. Um, personally, I kind of like I'd rather have I'd rather owe less. Um, I'd rather get a concession. I'd rather get a lower price <laughs> than any of that. But if I need a concession for my cash and stuff, then then that's where you want to go. But that's exactly what we're talking about today: is getting a lower price so you owe less when you sell it. So if you can just get a lower price or get a get a cash concession, or if I bring less money to closing, obviously I did well there too. Um, so if they want to do uh, closing costs and prepaids, that's great. If they want to do the, the two, one buy down, that's okay. It all depends on when they're going to refinance. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Can you send me the, the sheet, please? Thank you. Uh, if you will email me, I will. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. You bet. And um, I was going to say, Ryan, just to piggyback off of that, just listening to your, um, your buyer and just finding out what's important to them. If they have any challenges in the, the money to bring down, then of course you will go lean towards that that way to, to to help them. So it just really depends on the needs of the of that buyer. I, I would I would definitely you know that that should run your decision on how you're going to guide them. Dwayne, that is a wonderful point, and that's going to put me on a tangent here. So thank you very much for that, <laughs> guys. You are salespeople. We've talked about this before. Those of you who who come to these, um, if you go to a dealership right now, a car dealership. They have, I don't know if you guys know this, um, they have three or four or five ways to get you, right? They're going to listen to your hot button issue. You're going to go in there and, and Jennifer's going to go in there and say, my gosh, I want $15,000 for my trade in. I don't care what you say. I've been shopping it around. I know the blue book value of this thing, blah, 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 blah. And Daryl's a salesman and Daryl's going to say, oh, I don't know, Jennifer, I'm going to talk to my manager. But they're going to go back there and talk about they're going to get you to pay full sticker plus this what's this market premium stuff they do now plus their dealer fees and plus they're going to get you there well jennifer i think we can do that if you use our financing and we're going to have to charge you you know full sticker on this this new car that you want they're going to get you one way or the other or if you go in uh if jennifer goes in and says i'm not paying full sticker i don't care well okay we'll give you eight thousand dollars for that old trade in of yours and and you're going to have to use our our financing they're going to get you one way or the other you're going to go and say i'm going to use my financing they're going to get you a million other ways and you're going to have to buy the warranty if you want to do your own financing because we don't we can't have that <laughs> they're going to get you one way or another right uh, and i'm i'm assuming there's some money in those warranty things because they uh they try pretty hard to sell them so i don't know if you guys noticed that i got phone calls and stuff for a while but they um they're going to get you one way or the other. So find out with your client what's important to them. And, and like Duane said, some of it's just an inability and you'll know right away. They'll say, well, I don't have a lot of money down, but I want to buy a house. Obviously, you're going to work on them for that. You're right. That's where you're going to work the concession for the closing cost. But there are so many other ways to help them and what's important to them. And you guys know this when you're when you're showing them houses, they talk about, oh, we can do a four, three, or I guess we can squeeze into a three, two, but we really need a big backyard or all I, I don't really care. I'm worried about the school district, right? So you guys already do this with some things. Do this with their financing also. Do this with their, your negotiating when you're going in and they're going to say, they're going to have hot buttons, right? They're going to say, boy, these 7% interest rates, it just kills me, right? Well, talk to them about the buy down then. If that's what their problem is, the buy down. Other people say, boy, I, I just, I, I might want to wait a little bit longer for these prices to go down. Say, so we can negotiate something on a price, right? Let's find something you like and, and see if the price works for you. So there's all kinds of different things that we can do, right? So figure out what's hot, but you guys are, at the end of the day, you are in sales. You have to sell, okay? You're still doing what's best for them, but you're still doing what they want, right? You're guiding them through the process. Do not put your values on other people. Right. I cannot afford a G7 jet, right? A private jet for myself. But I could sell them because I don't put my values on other people. I realize other people have different values and different bank accounts and different this or that. Um, so you know, you have to put don't put your values on other people and say, we're gonna get you a good deal because we're gonna do this and this. Well, then, uh, I don't know, 
right? It doesn't, it, you can't beat them over the head with this stuff. You can educate them, but don't beat them over the head with this is the way to do it. All right. I'm sorry. I went on a tangent. Uh, Pollock, your hand is raised. How can I help you? Hi, Ryan. Um, I have a quick question um, about a listing. Um, so I wasn't able to find like closed comms in, that sold. So this is a very nice neighborhood gated, everything like top rated. I couldn't find any, any similar comps in 60 days. Now, as a listing agent, if I were to present comps to the appraiser, I'm not sure, like, what do you guys recommend? Is it okay to do that? It's my first listing, so I don't know. How far back is it appropriate to go? Um, I, I go back uh, six months typically, but go back as far as you need to, to find what you're trying to do. If you're trying to get the value up, go back and, and, and get those six month ones. I, I don't think you need to disclose any more than that. Let me tell you guys something about appraisers. They are humans. Okay. If you are trying, uh, I had somebody, one, one of you, I, I don't know if they're in here or not, uh, asked me the other day, is this unusual as a newer agent? Is this unusual that our appraisal came in at the exact amount of the contract? Absolutely not. If it's close, they'll make it match. They don't want you to have problems. But and this was like a seven hundred and and there's a seven oh two five was their purchase price. And they said that's a kind of a weird number for them to come back at. And I said, yeah, the guy got the seven hundred thousand, and he didn't want to give you guys a hard time, so he made it seven oh two five just to fit. I, I mean, really, at that price, five ten grand, twenty grand here and there is not even that big of a deal, right? He's going to make it if it's close. They'll make it work especially if they like you, if you tried to help, if you were nice to them, if you gave them good access, if you were, if you're trying, they're going to try to, okay, they're humans, right? This is what I tell my kid at school. If you're, you know, the, this teacher doesn't like me, that's because you don't try in their class. If you show you're trying, you know, you're, you're, uh, other, they're going to think you have a good attitude and they're going to like you. It's the same way for appraisers guys to a, to a smaller extent. They have to be, they have to, be accountable at some point. They're not going to. They're not going to make a six hundred thousand dollar house seven hundred thousand, but they will make a seven hundred thousand meet seven hundred five or seven ten. That's they're not going to. They're not going to so, mess with you over yeah, that, so, especially if you're trying. So with this particular listing, um, it was listed like fifty k less than anyways the the comps that sold in summer. Um, it's just that I couldn't find anything within 60 days, but I have like enough comps, like going back about nine months. And then this is like, um, the comps that sold during summer were like 750, 770. This is under contract for 685. So I just want to make sure I'm not like presenting something. It, it's my very first listing. So I'm kind of like a, I'm jittery about the whole thing on what to do. So yeah. I, I, have you guys um, read an appraisal recently? Anybody have a recent appraisal that they've read and the the appraisers will mention the market shift? Um, they know there's a market shift. They mentioned the market shift. Have you guys seen that? Anybody seen this on an appraisal? They're mentioning the market shift. So, um, you know, because they have to justify, they have to get, they've got to do work and find these uh, things. I think they'll go out, especially in the, when the market is changing, Pollock, I think they'll go out farther rather than back out farther geographically than back further in time. So um, that might be your your key. So, um, but I present it all, especially if it makes you look good, makes the property look good. Yes. Yeah, Andy. another suggestion I have too is, um, Pollock, for you is look at the, look at that price. Like if you said 685, then maybe look like 670 to 690 sold. And then just search the whole MLS and see what those other houses look like. So then try to get as close as you can to where yours is, but just search and see mm -hmm. what those sold houses are like. Then you'll get a better idea of, yeah, this house sold, you know, it was much smaller, but it was lakefront or, you know, this house sold and it was mm -hmm. like this. And then you can mm -hmm. see where the adjustments need to be made. So I've done that before with some challenging houses mm -hmm. like that, that, you know, I couldn't really find comps for. See what sold yeah, at that price so you can make a mm -hmm. comparison. I think this is the other way around for this particular property. It's, um, it's in a very nice gated resort style neighborhood top rated schools in the area but like right mm -hmm. south of it the other um neighborhoods that are they are not in the a the same school district the school district's not good it's changing 
and then it's not gated. It's just like a regular subdivision. So that was the other concern I had. Like, even though it's like within a one mile radius, but I mean, there's pretty much no comparing except for like the one mile radius between the two neighborhoods. So I don't even know if the, they would be good comps. So I'm just limiting myself to whatever sold in that particular neighborhood, like nine months back. I don't know if it's okay, well, okay. Yeah, but that's all I can well, do. Pollock, you don't have to do that. They adjust for neighborhoods and stuff like that. I would point out to the appraiser about that. They adjust okay. for neighborhoods. They know. They I mean, they know. They see the different comps. But I would okay. point that out to the appraiser. This is one you definitely want to show up for. And another thing, guys, you guys start getting in the 600, 700 and, and up range. Suggest to your sellers an appraisal up front. So you're pricing it properly. And wouldn't it be nice, Pollock, if you had an appraisal already at 725 to go in and hand mm -hmm. that to the guy and say, this is an appraisal. Okay. You might want to just update these comps or whatever. You okay, know? So, so with that, a follow-up question. Um, as a, It's my first listing. How do I get about ordering an appraisal like all by myself? Just find an appraiser online, just ask them to do one for me or go through the lender? Mm. I don't know. No, no, you, you, don't, well, you don't know the lender yet. So no, you just ask an appraiser. There's appraisal companies and they'll do it. They don't only work for lenders. Okay. So especially right now, they're not busy. So they uh, <laughs> a year ago, it was hard to get one to get out and do something like that. But okay. now they're not busy. Okay. Understood. Okay. I'll, I'll try getting that done then because I mean, I'm, I wasn't like too much concerned about the appraisal coming in low because it's already like 65 K off mm -hmm. of the summer price. But then um, when I started doing like the one mile thing, then I started to get concerned and confused. And yeah, but this kind of like helps. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, a year ago, they were they were busy, not just with sales, but with refinances. And now they are not. Nobody is refinancing at a higher rate. So they're not busy. Um, any other questions or comments on that? Uh Jerry said the seller did not give a seller credit on one home because I felt it would be tough to appraise at the contract price. I talked to the seller about doing a price reduction on the home as a seller credit. This got word it appraised. It was better in this instance than giving credit to seller. Okay. Um, yeah. So how, what is success now? If you're, if you have the listing, what is success in, in any kind of even market or a buyer's market? Um, I would find success money-wise for my opinion. Not everything is about money. There are lots of different terms to a contract, but money-wise, close as you can get to appraisal, right? Getting them as close as you can get to appraisal. That's why I don't like um, uh, seller concessions as much if I'm on the listing side, because we're going to be limited to appraisal and we're conceding it, it, the best we can do is appraisal, right? Because we go over on a finance deal, we go over appraisal, they're going to try to cut us back down to appraisal. And then we got to give them concessions. And typically if we're giving concessions, it's because they don't have a bunch of money. The buyer doesn't have a bunch of money. And so they're not going to be able to go over appraisal. So that's kind of, uh, that's, that's kind of my own personal uh, view towards credits. I don't, or concessions. I don't like them. I like them instead of repairs because um, you don't want to get, you know, involved in doing a lot of repairs and trying to meet their expectations, the buyer's expectations and, uh, you know, their demands to hire a licensed uh, handyman to change a light bulb or whatever they're trying to do. So um, that stuff gets ridiculous. Um, any other uh, questions or comments on that? Who's got something? Uh, Liz, tell us about the drinking with crypto. Hi, everyone. Um, well, there were some really interesting people. I saw G Jika, I think it is. Uh, he showed up. Um, I want there were there was a guy who I really wanted to see from Tampa, who's killing it, is doing pretty much what I'm doing. But the guy is amazing. Uh, put him in in simple words and and making it happen. So that was interesting. We also met uh, whoever runs the MLS in Costa Rica, um, and he's trying to do like a a, a alliance with realtors here in Florida to be able to, um, how do you say, advertise his properties over there in Costa Rica, which happens to be one, like a playground for Americans and Europeans. So it's moving a lot. So it was quite interesting. Uh, we didn't get to see the CEO of property, but it was great. So I, um, I wish for that to keep happening and get to keep networking with people, especially now that we're in, about, in a reset, so to speak. 
when yeah. it comes to crypto. And if you know anything about that. Awesome. Awesome. Um, what else is going on with you guys? That sounds great. You know, uh, Costa Rica used to be a place where people would talk about you could take a uh, hundred thousand U.S. dollars down there and live like a king forever, and you know, get an oceanfront place and you know all this stuff. And people figured out about it, and now you can't. It's, it's they they figured out they can charge a lot more for everything. But um, that's what's going on with that. All right, we got some raised hands here. Let's go with uh, Tammy from Orlando. <laughs> um. Actually, I was going to ask Liz, I got a random text. I don't know how the guy got my name. Um, and then he wanted me to communicate with him on WhatsApp. He's got cryptocurrency. I sent it to my son. He sent me a screenshot. My son's like, he's got a crap ton of money. But he goes, you don't even know if that's really real or not. He could have made all that up. But so anyway, he was looking for up to a million. And he, I was looking, trying to find what he had. U.S. something or other. So he wanted to know if he could buy with crypto a $3 million, you know, up to, I think, 1.5 to 3 million. In my process of talking to him, he's like, so if you sell me a nice home, then I can teach you. And for I don't know if he's trying to get me to like give him money. I don't know if it's a scam. I'm going to keep playing it out and see what happens. But it's like, you know, I can make you 20%, blah, blah. Um, so anyway, but I don't really understand if you've got crypto, why wouldn't you just convert it to U.S. dollars and and buy your house, you know, it, whatever it's worth on the day before you close or two days before you close, why wouldn't you just cash it out and then send the cash to the title company? Why would you try to do all this crypto stuff? Um, okay, but thank you for the question. Um, the reason why people want to do crypto is because they want to uh, don't want to go through any bank or save themselves. It's, it's a cheaper way to transact, number one. Number two, you can buy any property in U.S. with crypto. Even if the seller doesn't want to accept crypto, the title company will convert whatever uh, disperse the monies accordingly. So if your buyer has a crypto and they want to pay with it, well, the title company will still have to convert some of those funds to be able to pay the, the taxes and the more the stamps on the deed and all, all that. But so if seller wants to receive crypto, they'll be dispersed in crypto. Um, so to answer your question, they don't want to do that because, of course, it'll carry more fees. They prefer a wallet to wallet, which is what I did with the NFT. The NFT property would allow the property just to connect their wallet and just simply make an offer and buy it right then and there without, without even involving the title comp company. Um, now, if there's if this deal, if you come up with or any of you come up with a buyer who wants to pay in crypto for it, any property in the U.S. can be bought with it. Just let me know. Does that help? So do does the title company, so if the seller doesn't want crypto, then what do you do? Then at that point, we still will make the deal. That person will pay in crypto and title company will disperse this money accordingly. They will try, um, only, how do you say that? It will only convert the part they need to pay out the uh, third parties on the transaction including the seller. Seller will receive fiat if that is the case. And just for you know, right now they're transacting with Bitcoin, USDC, which is the one yeah, that I think that's what you yes. say, and Ethereum, which are the main three tops that they're working on right now. They can also use some other one, but it will be on a case-by-case -case basis. Do you have a particular title company that you work with? Yes, yes. I do work with uh, property title. Um, which is the same uh, property platform. And I suggest all of you to sign up with it. You, When you use their platform, even if you're not transacting on crypto, you are getting crypto just for transacting. Just to give you an example, I, I upload my listing and just for uploading um, disclosures, just for uploading pictures, I get crypto. And I and that crypto might not be worth that much in a, in a bear market. But once the, we get to a bull market, especially if this, this is a token that is... Is, is putting real estate on the blockchain is going to be very available. It might not be right now, but it will be in a two year when Bitcoin uh, halving time path it is, which is 2024. So you want to do that. You, um, probably, I'll send you a link to all of you in case you want to sign up. Um, it's worth it. Every time you go and check into a house to show it, you get crypto for that as well. Um, it's very transparent. When I put into the platform a property, my seller will be able to view um, the offers that come in. 
um, they will get to approve or, or, um, or decline an offer. Um, everything is very transparent. Everybody who gets involved in a transaction on the platform, title company, uh, transaction coordinator, seller, buyer, everybody's in one page. I don't have to email a form for them to have their buyers to sign or their sellers to sign and bring it again. No, they do it right there from the platform. Only one word for everybody and it elim eliminates title fraud, emails back and forth, misunderstandings, the whole nine yards. So I'll suggest everybody to, to definitely look into it. Fantastic. Um, Angie from Tampa. Did you want to read the chat? Because I think it was based off of what Lizeth was saying before we change topics. Um, yeah, you guys are asking that. I just read it. No, Bitcoin is not in trouble. First of all, we need to know that Bitcoin is not crypto. Crypto is what came after Bitcoin. Bitcoin is like the king. And if you somebody reads the white paper of Bitcoin, is beyond any other altcoins. Um, so what is uh, in trouble is not even the technology, is the bad actors on it. And that happens, exchange companies are like banks. And the whole concept of crypto is to get rid of banks, not have to have your assets with somebody else's custody. Exchanges are custody, they keep your funds and you cannot, if you keep them there and they go to bankruptcy, your funds will be their owner. They have the keys of those wallets. So the whole point of this is for you to hold your assets in a decentralized wallet where you hold your keys and you're not in trouble. I put all my stuff in out of exchanges. I had been advising people to do it because of this reason. We don't want a bank. We don't want an intermedi intermediate, <laughs> however you say it. We don't want that. You want to hold your assets and the way you do, there are ways to do it, but people got to learn. It's, a, it's not, it's simple when you actually know the mission. You see what I'm saying? I hope that answers your question. But no, Bitcoin is not in trouble. Yeah, it was uh, it was at 65 or whatever. And now it's 15 or whatever it is now. It just it's it goes up and down. Um, right. The um, uh, Duena, uh last week we had Divi on here. Was it was two weeks ago. Uh, we had Divi on here. And uh, as as Angie pointed out, Home Partners of America, they kind of do the same thing, a little bit different qualification stuff. So look at both of them. But just go on the MLS with those. I'm sorry. Duena was asking about uh, looking for a home near Okoe to lease to own or rent. Um, that's exactly what they do. They rent to own. So um, and you get paid like a cash transaction. So that's great. Otherwise, you're going to be doing a rental fee. Um, so big difference. Um, a lot of times they close in three to four weeks and you get paid like a real deal. Um, as Lisa pointed out, they're offering 10% under asking or whatever. Uh, that probably might work. So try it. Um, all right. Any other uh, questions, comments? Yes. Yes, Angie. Yeah. Angie from Tampa. Yeah, I put in... Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I put in the chat my um, a listing that I have over in Oviedo. Um, that's really slowed down lately, like a lot of other ones. Um, but it's a beautiful home. It's in a nice neighborhood, you know, right near UCF. The um, neighborhood is pretty crowded there um, as far as like parking on the streets and things like that. Um, but it is a really nice neighborhood. It's a four bedroom, two and a half bath pool home in really good condition. Um, it's priced good compared, you know, with the comps and all the things that I'm looking at online. Um, it's still priced really good. We got one really low offer that the sellers were completely offended by. Um, and so it's just kind of been sitting around waiting. So if anybody um, has a buyer, then that's great. Or if you would like to use this home to promote yourself on social media, feel free to schedule an appointment on showing time. It shows really well. It's, it's nice inside. Um, and, you know, it's a great, it's a great home to do a walkthrough tour for if anybody wants to get out there and promote themselves a little bit by having a house to talk about. Um, and the seller's, and seller's ready to move. Where, where is, a, you said Oviedo? Uh, I'm kind of mm -hmm. new to Florida. What, where, where exactly is that? Like what area? Right, have you been to the, yeah, have you been to the office before? It's just a little yes. bit north of the office. Yep. Yeah, it's, 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 it's over by UCF, the east side of Orlando. It's not no. near Ocoee, if that's what you're, they won't no, be it's happy. Opposite. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it's, it's the opposite of Ocoee area. Um, so a little bit northeast of, of Orlando, Oviedo is there. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. so it's a great neighborhood. Okay. A, a nice house. 
on a globe, it's close to Ocoee, but not on a, like a map of Orlando. <laughs> All right. So any, uh, any other questions or comments? So, so Dwayne, I want to be clear about this, Dwayne. Get on uh, MLS, search Ocoee, find out, or actually, get, I'm sorry, get on the Divi website or the uh, Home Partners of America website, and they will have a little thing kind of just like Zillow does, a little maps with little houses poking out on them, and you yeah. find what you want to find, and you try to, um, I mean, follow their instructions. You'll, you'll start your own little, um, your own little portal on there, and um, you submit your, your client their qualifications. Each one's has qualifications. Look at their qualifications first. Make sure your client will, will meet them. Um, otherwise, you can also look in MLS and search for the financing part. If you go into um, residential search and go into detail, you can put in there what kind of financing you're looking for. There is a lease to own. Uh, there is a, a, I would click lease to own and other um, and see what you come up with. You're going to come oh. up with a bunch of others that's going to, because people just click other, but you'll look, you look for seller financing, lease to own, and other. Okay. Can you do it? Like if I don't have MLS yet, I can do, can I do that on our website? Like um, the, No. Okay. No, no. you're going to okay. need to get MLS for this. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, any other questions or comments? Uh, Liz was going to provide a short uh, link or something for the information she was giving us. I don't know. Liz from uh, Kissimmee, you are. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Um, oh, there she goes. Is that it? The, the propy? Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sandra, I have a question for you. How's it, how is uh, real estate at the beach going? What's going on over there? Um, Sandra. Wow. She got her info and left. Um, no, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> Hit and um, run. So tell us, how, so just so you guys know, Sandra is in uh, Brevard County. Um, so tell us what you got. Well, right now, uh, the properties are still very high. Everybody's nervous about the hurricane, but everything is very high in that area. You know, so the prices, the inventory in the new house, they're a little bit slow, but they still, the prices are high. Okay, beachfront condos, uh, not affected too much in Brevard? Well, not in um, not in Cocoa Beach, no, not that much, you know, just the scare, like every year we go through the scare of what is going to happen, but pretty much it was just a lot of rain, and but no, in Cocoa Beach. Right, I, you, I, I'm sure you guys are aware of what happened in the Daytona Shores area and all that stuff, a bunch of places are uninhabitable and shut down you can't sell them or buy them or or live in them um so lots of stuff going on there um all right any other questions or comments oh by the way uh if jerry is still on there jerry needs help over in that area sandra i don't know if jerry jerry left i'll i'll, I'll introduce okay. you guys oh jerry okay okay all right um, Ryan, yes. Can you please give a slight briefing on rent to own and where these homes are? I missed the presentation. Sorry. So just a little small briefing. Um, okay. So uh, Divi and Home Partners of America, their competitors are a little bit different. When you um, uh, when you have a client who wants to do that, the best way to do that, if you want to get paid like a like a sale. The best way to do that is to go through these people who come in with cash and then they give them a certain amount of time to buy it. They're going to charge them rent. They give them a certain amount of time to buy the house. Um, uh, Home Partners is, um, I believe, five years. Um, it goes up 5% a year, the price does. Um, Divi, is, and I'm giving, that's old news from a year ago or so maybe. Um, Divi has their own their own thing. So each of them has their own, um, their own rules and stuff and their own... Um, qualifications but go on their websites and and just google them and get their websites and go on there and they'll ask you to open a portal you can search by your you'll start a new account with them um doesn't cost anything you'll search by an area or a price range or whatever you want they have a search that comes up with a little map a bunch of homes pop up on them and what they what they will and won't do um 
I know Home Partners of America, their limit was 500. I think Divi told us last week, and at least in Orlando and Tampa and Jacksonville is 450, 450, 475, something like that. So um, they don't do like. So they are in all the areas? I mean, they're in different areas or just one concentration? No, they're in, they're in wherever there's houses, as far as I know. Okay. 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 Thank as far you. As I know. You bet. I'm still and here, Ryan. Of, oh, okay. An important thing I was going to say about I'm home partners. Here. Okay. All, all right. Jerry, Jerry, meet Sandra. You guys can, uh, I don't know if you know how to privately message somebody on there, but you guys uh, need to meet each other and discuss uh, what you're looking for over there, Jerry. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Angie. Yeah, I haven't worked with Divi, but I've worked with Home Partners of America. And an important thing is that they only buy homes in good school districts. Um, it used to be A high schools. I think they've kind of changed it a little bit lately since Florida schools kind of suck. Um, but they usually were buying only in A high school districts. Um, so you're going to have to be aware of that when searching it. And I like America Home, Partner, um, Home Partners of America site because they'll tell you what the rental amount is. Like I'm on Divi right now and it's telling me what, you know, like a sale price is. Um, so maybe they have it on there too. I'm just not familiar with their site, but Home Partners of America, you can search an area, search a size, search a rent amount, and then it'll show you the houses that they have available that they will buy for you and then rent to your clients and you'll be the buyer's agent for them. Um, and it works out pretty easily. You know, the transaction is very easy because they handle the whole contract. They do, they do pretty much everything. So it's, if any, if anybody contacts you about renting and they are solid, they can, really can't buy right now. I always sign, sign them up and send them. Home Partners of America links. Guys, this would be a really good thing to do. So you guys don't even know. We've had Home Partners of America on here. Um, and some of you guys know. Um, and we do a couple of deals a year. You guys do a couple of deals a year through them. Um, and Divi was on here uh, last week or week before. I, I, I don't know. Um, my life's a mess. Um, but they they gave this, they gave do this too. So uh, when, but when Home Partners came in, they came in one time educating us all on what they do. And the second time they came in was to help you guys market what they do. This would be a great time to market what they do. Like we said, people are scared of, you're scared of interest rates. How about getting that house on a rent to own? And then your, your price is locked in for a couple of years, whatever, right? So like I said, there are people who uh, have all kinds of hot button issues. They just won't do this or they won't do that. And they're just, uh, whatever it is that it, they think, get them locked in with, with that, market that. Guys, just put more more arrows in your quiver, man. You got to you got to piece together deals, right? Some from here, some from there, some from schools, some from church, some from uh, baseball, some from the soccer moms. Wh whatever it is that you do and you get your deals from, keep doing it. Uh, Liz, getting some from from um, crypto, some from this, some from that, right? Just piece stuff together. Uh, give yourself more ways to get to get deals. Uh, and one of those is doing this Home Partners of America thing or the Divi thing. Um, they, they mentioned uh, also that they do, they'll help you with the marketing and all that stuff as well. Um, within the last month, we had Jen Pereira in here. She offered all kinds of data and help with, with uh, drumming up business for you guys. Use these tools. Don't just sit around and wait. It's not going to happen. Nobody's going to knock on your door this morning and, and ask to buy or sell something. You've got to use these tools and get out there. Uh, get your, um, uh, Jen had all kinds of cool, cool stuff for you, all kinds of cool tools for you. And, and other companies do too. And that's a whole nother thing I want to talk to you guys about. And I always do bring it up, uh, is using these title companies and these, uh, lenders who are going to either co-market with you or the title companies are going to give you a bunch of data, give you a bunch of ones. And Jen isn't the only one that does it. I, I hear from a bunch of them who want to talk to you guys, um, and tell you about all the cool data they use and this and that and all the all the tools they can offer you. They want your business. They want you to bring them your closings. That's how they make money. So they're offering you all kinds of stuff to do it. Um, so make sure you use that stuff. Um, Home Partners of America, I definitely would look into their marketing though. Talk to their rep. Um, you know, look them up. You guys, Google them. Uh, look them up. I'll have them in eventually too. I don't want to do Divi and them within six months of each other, but the Divi person that came on, you guys got their information. Um, use it. Any other questions or comments? All right. Nothing else today. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful day, wonderful week, and we will see you. Uh, I am probably going to do one on the day before Thanksgiving. So um, I will see you guys then. Ryan. Yes, Sandra. Yes. <laughs> so 
I got show. <laughs> what happened to the link for us to see the prior videos? Uh, we have a new YouTube channel where we had to set up. Um, the old one still works, though, I believe. Um, but we got kicked off of YouTube. Um, it, it's a it's a long it's a long story. Had to do blame it on Abby. You guys remember Abby? Uh, blame it on Abby. Her her whatever she did expired, and we didn't have. I don't know. It's a long story. Um, but we've set up a new one. We say we saved the the a lot of the important ones from the old one um, that will that will be on the new one. I think they already are. I'll have to ask Yari about it. But uh, Yari said end up that will be ready for you guys. I, it is ready. I mean, I think I'll have to check on that today. I'll get back with you guys. Should be up. Here we go. Should be up and running fully by next week. There you go. All right. Thanks. But we did save a bunch of them. I'm glad you mentioned that. We did save a bunch of the, she saved the good ones. Um, there's a lot of bad ones, I guess, but um, it's under construction at the moment. She's getting, she's getting it done. All right. Um, any other questions or comments? All right. Awesome, guys. Take care. Have a great week. And we'll see you next week. Bye.